the military really prepared me for everything that followed. Uh, actually, starting with Officers Candidate School, you know, if you follow the tenets of that leadership, those le that leadership model served, has served, served me in the FBI and it served me at Verizon. So I really think that the military is a good base for whatever one might choose to do afterwards, whether they choose to make the military a career or pursue a career outside of the military. I think you can't go have a better preparation than the military. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix up the order. We're going to go back to Aaron. What about you? What about your transition from service into civilian life? Agreed. Um, I moved to Chicago right out of the military. It's the first place I've ever chosen to live in my life. Really? And being there on my own, I wasn't afraid and I didn't feel overwhelmed by the experience because I know moving from base to base to base, my mom was also in the Army. She was a career um, Army veteran. And so she had us go to four, I went to four different high schools. I lived in many countries. I lived all across the United States. And so I had to make friends and establish myself everywhere I went. So when I moved to Chicago to go to school, it was a no brainer. It was an easy transition. Why Chicago? It's your first time you get to choose, and that's where you chose. I'm not, I'm not knocking that as a great decision. I'm just curious. Well, now, don't judge me. I'm not judging one bit. I followed a boy. <laughs> oh, story as old as time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Very much so. Yeah, everything happens for a hey, reason, right? It worked out well for me. There we are. Perfect. I'm uh, a Chicago native, so I don't need you being an apologist for Chicago. <laughs> yeah, there, no, there's... Listen, I love Chicago. All right. Well, the secret was revealed. We all assumed that's what it was going to be, but no, it was the, the, the deeper story there. Like I said, we could do a whole hour just talking about that. That's what we're, we got a lot to get to. Uh, let's run back down to the front. Joe, how about you? Yeah, I, se I separated from active duty in 2005, and uh, I moved to Orlando, Florida, uh, mostly because that's where my parents lived, and at the time, um, it made the most sense. So I was thinking about getting out of the military and going back to school. But for like a lot in my generation of post-9-11 veterans, um, you know, I do a job today leading a nonprofit um, doing a lot of research, policy, program services that are really different than life on a nuclear submarine, f for instance, right? Um, but, you know, I'm like a lot in my generation in that nearly 87% of post-9-11 veterans wind up doing a job post-military that really has little or nothing to do with what they did in the military. I think what we take from that military service are a lot of the intangibles Mike was talking about, right? Like leadership, decision-making, uh, the ability to organize, et cetera. And those are the things that we bring home to civil society with us when we come out of the uniform. And Jamal, we'll go there because I got a lot I want to unpack from all of your answers as well. So let's start with that. With that. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm uh, born and raised in uh, New York City. A uh, little uh, fact about me, I've lived in every single borough in New York City. I have. Um, but uh, born in Brooklyn, raised in the Bronx. I had a different transition experience. Um, I, I grew up in the South Bronx for most of my formative years and joined the Marines in 1993. Uh, was deployed to Bosnia and the former Yugoslavia. Um, Marine Corps was not as challenging as I thought it was going to be, especially in the upbringing in the South Bronx. But I, I, what I would have to say is the biggest uh, challenge I ever faced to date um, was my, separate, my separation from the Marine Corps. I was completely and utterly unprepared mm -hmm. to come back to uh, civilian life after the Marine Corps, which resulted in um, having some really difficult life crises that now inform how I um, work with veterans and how I develop policy. 